All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's do a timeline recap. So in December 2008, they made the announcement that the analog signals were going to be shut off on February 17th. All right. Now, I knew the date was in the Bible, knew something was fishy, but couldn't put my finger quite on it. All right. So come January, I um, had painted up a couple pictures. And, I, you know, we have a new president and all. I wanted to go to the inauguration, make me a couple dollars by selling um, t-shirts, postcards, etc. and so forth. Alright, so I was thoroughly distracted. I wasn't really worried about the um, that whole February 17th thing. Okay, so in January, I made a move, went out to um, D.C., go make some money, or at least attempt to. While I was gone, I decided that I was going to stay in Georgia in Atlanta, Georgia. So I went from D.C., went down to Georgia, and I was living in Georgia all the way up until about June. And uh, in June, I went to go visit my sister in Ohio. And when I went to, when I went out there in Ohio, I was noticing that it seemed like all the trees were dying out there. And for some reason, the, the city or the state was putting fertilizer at the base of all trees. So it was like the whole Ohio just smelled like manure because they was putting fertilizer everywhere, and I thought that was strange. So <clears throat> I wanted to come back to Colorado by my mom's birthday. My mom's birthday is July 17th, and I wanted to come spend the birthday with her. So by about July 15th or something, I was back in Colorado. Now... By this time, I was, you know, kind of really suspicious that something odd was happening. So I started going to the li to the library, doing some research. And while I was at the library, I came across this book, The Astronomical Phenomena, where it tells, you know, what position the planets, the moon, the sun are going to be. Tells what the uh, Earth's obliquity is and such. And it was based upon information that I found out that I found in this book, which I was able to prove that the earth was tilting. So based upon that information, I went and filed my federal lawsuit in August of 2009. So in August of 2009, I, felt, I filed my lawsuit, and I told them that basically the, um, that in 2012 we was going to have an earthquake that was basically going to end everybody that wasn't in a secure place, and I asked them to build bunkers. And I told them that in October, the president was going to declare a state of national emergency. So on October 21st, the judge dismissed my lawsuit because he said I lacked standing because I filed the claim up under a law which requires that the president declare a state of national emergency before they can act on it. So they dismissed it on the 21st. Two days later, the president declared a state of national emergency. After that, I went to the office of Diana DeGette, who is um, my representative in the House of Representatives. I explained everything to her, gave her all the necessary information, and she got back with me on November 3rd and was like, can't do nothing for you. So then, I went to the office of the governor, and I found a... Uh, I filed a request through the Citizens Advocate Corps, and I basically ran it all down to them and told them, hey, we need we need some help. Y'all need to uh, apply for, the, for some assistance from FEMA. And they got back with me and was like, can't do nothing for you. So after they did that, and that opened up the door for me to go to 
to the district court in Denver, Colorado, and on February 1st, 2010, I filed a writ of mandamus against the state and the city and was basically asking the judge to, to compel, to issue a mandate to the governor and to the mayor to start making preparations for the fact that the earth's tilt was gradually declining, people were going to get sick, earthquakes were going to become more widespread and, and devastating, and in 2012, we need to be up under the mountain. So in June of 2009, or, or 2010 rather, the state filed a motion to dismiss. And basically their argument was that nobody can predict earthquakes and nobody knows why they occur, and therefore I was speculating. So on June 9th, 2010, the judge dismissed my state complaint also. Now, once he dismissed my complaint, I went back to the library to see if the to see if the 2012 edition of this book, The Astronomical Phenomena, had made it to the library. And while I was there, I showed the information that was in this book to a librarian and she told me that the government had discontinued the government publications and that they were no longer going to be receiving any and in fact they told them to get rid of the ones that they had so she went in the back and put this stamp on the book and came out and gave it to me so at that point I went to the Denver Public Library and I showed the librarian this book and I asked her, I said, do you guys have a copy of the 2012 edition of this book? And she told me no, that the government had discontinued all their government documents. So then, I went up into the mountains for probably about a month so that I could try to calculate when the next earthquakes were going to happen. And once I had the information that I needed, I came back down from the mountains probably about on June, on July 5th. And I went back to the library to get some more information and do a little more research. And when I went to the library, This book was on the shelf. See, it's Astronomical Phenomena for the year 2012. Do not circulate. This book went to the library on January 26, 2010. Now, since I filed my first lawsuit in the federal courts where I told them that the planet Venus was going to eclipse the sun at the same time that the moon was in partial eclipse, right? I told them that in August of 2009. So when I told them that and when I filed, since this book didn't even go to the library until January 26, 2010, I could not have known what was in this book. Furthermore, since it was a do not circulate, this right here means that this book wasn't even supposed to be on the shelf. This is one of the books that they keep in the back of the library where only government officials can look at. So somebody either accidentally or very graciously put this book on the shelf. Open the book, I was surprised to learn that the book was basically focusing on one event, the transit of Venus 2012. 
And it says a transit of Venus over the disk of the sun will occur on June 5th through 6th. In its summary of eclipse and transits for 2012, the book clearly states that a partial eclipse of the moon will take place on June 4th, 2012. So basically, in the year 2012, according to the United States Navy, the planet Venus is going to transit the sun at the same time that the moon is in partial eclipse. Now, if you look at the 2011 edition of the book, alright, there's something different about the 2012. This right here. Do not circulate. So it's something in the 2012 edition that they didn't want us to know about. See, that's not on the 2011 edition. Alright? Now watch this. Check this out. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, is the 2013 edition. Alright? Depository materials, government publications. Alright. It don't got that do not circulate stamp on it. So that means that there's something in the 2012 edition that they did not want us to know about. See, it's not on the 2013. And it's not on the 2011. 